Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this uh, Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Up first on the hazardous weather chart here, we've got uh, the eastern Alaska range west of the Toke Cutoff uh, under the influence of a wind advisory. Uh, for tonight, uh, winds currently like a delta junction gusting up around 40 miles an hour. and uh, in fact, uh, pretty gusty winds even in the Copper River Basin, Gulcanesine gusts uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour along the Copper River, and uh, stronger up here through the passes, I mentioned 40 miles an hour Delta Junction, and those uh, could in some areas uh, increase tonight and looking for gusts to uh, 60 miles an hour in the uh, normally windier areas through the passes, again west of the Toke Cutoff, and that's for overnight tonight. And for uh, fire danger, of course, uh, quarter of an inch of rain fell at the Anchorage uh, uh, forecast office here in, on Sand Lake Road today, so uh, that really kind of uh, helped beat back the fire danger, uh, especially back here to the west, uh, but we still have the area in the Copper River Basin of high to very high uh, fire danger there due to those uh, gusty winds, but uh, nothing extreme though, but uh, those winds keeping it up and the lack of precipitation. Also, uh, Temperatures edging up into the lower 70s in some areas here. Uh, Chistana over toward, on the eastern, over, over toward May Creek and Kinnicott, uh, up to 72 this afternoon at 3 p.m. And those kind of temperatures also up into the eastern Tanaw Valley took 72 degrees, near 70 around Fairbanks, and uh, living good, 73 degrees this afternoon. And those same temperatures also observed down across the southern uh, well, actually, across the areas of the southeast coast, uh, some clouds kept it a little cooler down over the southeast interior. Otherwise, enough of the fire danger and satellite imagery showing a uh, big area of cloudiness with uh, a fair amount of rain, moderate at times, coming up uh, from uh, off the Pacific here into the Kenai Peninsula over toward Iliamna, especially along the uh, ed back edge of the front there, upwards of half an inch of rain falling. For example, uh, Seward, 12-hour period dating 3 o'clock today, had about uh, half an inch of rain, as did Sleep Mute over in the Cuscombe Valley and Iliamna, down by Iliamna Lake, and then uh, tapering off now over Kodiak, back edge of that cloud, just edging slowly off to the northeast there, and it's a little bit of a break here coming into the Alaska Peninsula. Low center out to the west here, Kind of gusty winds, 30, 35 miles an hour across the yukon Cuscombe Delta uh, early this morning and actually into the afternoon, places like Bethel, Cape Newenham seeing gusts 40 to 45 miles an hour, as well as other areas along the Cuscombe Delta coast, what about Cape Romanzoff and those areas. And then the other windy area, again, as I mentioned, the Alaska Range passes into the Copper River Basin. Otherwise, we've got uh, areas of light rain spreading all the way up into the northwest interior there, as much as possibly, oh, tenth of an inch of precipitation or a few hundredths the farther north you go. Nome did pick up uh, about a quarter of an inch of uh, rainfall today with uh, lighter amounts in across St. Lawrence Island. Another system here spreading some moisture in across the Aleutians. Uh, not really a big significant uh, weather system here. Uh, but that'll pick the winds up a little bit. Uh, cold basing gusts 35 miles an hour this afternoon, but uh, nothing more in small craft advisories. Really not all that strong, but a pretty good uh, moisture field with it. So definitely uh, rain and fog with that uh, up to about, uh, we'll say St. George Island coming into the eastern Aleutians and just clouds on back Adak Atka on out to Shimia. On the chart, here's roughly the position uh, mid-afternoon today of that front just getting by Kodiak. If it's not now, it will be very soon. And the uh, precipitation, a little more than we thought, coming into south-central Alaska, especially into the Anchorage area, with that quarter of an inch falling today, uh, moderate at times, 
and that extending up to the northwest there, kind of scattering out into showers over the western Brooks Range, northwest interior. Uh, dry for the most part along the uh, eastern north slope, although Kaktovik did pick up a one or two hundredths of an inch of precipitation and just a few hundredths of an inch back to the west. Otherwise, uh, some clearing here over the eastern interior along with the uh, variably cloudy skies today and the uh, sunshine that did break out again, allowed temperatures to warm up into the lower 70s, as I mentioned, the uh, Tanana Valley down into the Copper River Basin, as well as the southeast coast, uh, Cloac up to uh, 72 degrees today. Shelter Cove, uh, north of the, uh, let's see, Ketchikan area there, they had 76 today, and that was the warm spot in the state. In fact, lower 80s reported Haines Junction over here in the, uh, uh, I believe that Yukon there in Canada, on the highway, but partly to mostly sunny skies. Juno 70 degrees this afternoon, very nice conditions there. Probably maybe a repeat of that tomorrow and uh, not much in the way of uh, clouds off the coast there yet. And then some of these showers though, streaming moisture with this trough uh, westward, west southwest, uh, could see some showers this evening coming into uh, Stewart and Hyder, maybe even coming across the southern panhandle during the evening tonight. Uh, Already seeing the clouds increase this afternoon. Some showers may be already showing up uh, this side of the border. Otherwise, back here to the west, this low pressure area uh, lifting northward, slowly weakening off the uh, coast there with some breezy conditions, especially with this trough swinging in, kicking those winds again up 40, 45 miles an hour in the next system out here over the Aleutians uh, with a batch of rain associated with that. That'll move eastward tonight, spread rain, and a little bit of an increase in the winds. No big deal wind-wise here coming into the Alaska Peninsula. Probably a lot of IFR, possibly even low IFR on the upslope areas of the terrain. I'll wrap back in across the uh, Pribilofs and then showers and less wind over the central Aleutians. Out to the west, high pressure is starting to develop over the far western Bering and Aleutian areas. The uh, other low here tracking northward continues to weaken with uh, bands of moisture spinning around that, uh, keeping occasionally damp there, Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, into the Yukon Delta. This front comes eastward and uh, kind of hits the upper level ridge and starts to fall to pieces, but still an area of rain persisting until uh, kind of a uh, short wave aloft or upper trough wiggling up the uh, western side of this big upper ridge off to the east uh, until that kicks through later tonight. That'll probably shut the rain off, Cook Inlet into the Manuscus to sit in the valley. Until then, uh, showers and periods of light rain uh, will continue. Not bad over the panhandle. This area showers should shift down south of the area, off into British Columbia uh, after midnight, if not sooner. Otherwise, fair up over the northeast interior, and then those winds will begin to diminish or stay windy. That wind advisory out tonight for the eastern Alaska range. And then tomorrow, it's over. You can see uh, no isobars at all across the eastern interior. Just a lot of uh, clear skies here or maybe a few clouds in there, but uh, basically definitely dry. All the moisture will be back here to the west. This next front coming up as that low center, the original one here up off the, uh, or just west-northwest of Cape Lisbon and continuing to weaken. The other one lifting northward here in the front, uh, kind of a widespread area of light rain, fog or drizzle areas of. It won't be probably solid like I have it here, but uh, best chance definitely in the west. Trying to push eastward tomorrow. Should see an improvement in conditions. That original band of moisture here will just kind of do a slow dissolve and stay locked in place there. Could be some isolated showers lingering into the afternoon, maybe western Prince William Sound, uh, Talkeetna Mountains, nothing significant at all. Possible sunshine, possible sun breaks, uh, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, and the valleys. Better chance of sun over the eastern interior and a day tomorrow, much like today for the southeast coast. And then the outlook for Monday, that front really weakens I could have drawn it in as a trough, but there is an area of light rain precipitation with that, along with the clouds, and wind's pretty light there, but uh, best chance of rain here in the west Bristol Bay up across Yukon Cuscom Delta to the Seward Peninsula once again. Uh, just a slight chance of some shower activity here over the mountains of, uh, well, southern Alaska, mostly sunny over the eastern interior, Copper River Basin. Look for it to clear out, Kenai Peninsula. And the Panhandle uh, could see an increase in low clouds and fog along the coastline, but another dry day at least coming up. These showers uh, staying on the other side of the border and high pressure starting to develop a little more extensively over the western Aleutians into the west central Bering Sea ahead of a big storm out there 
near Kamchatka Peninsula, and this one uh, could be a threat for Monday evening, overnight Monday night. And for lows tonight, uh, 30s to lower 40s, eastern interior, otherwise mid to upper 40s to near 50 in the west, and 48 to 52 for the Panhandle, highs tomorrow, back into the 70s again, 60s to mid 70s, anywhere along the southeast coast there. And the same here, Copper River Basin, Eastern Interior, 65 to 75 for the highs, 60s to sit in the Valley, Kenai Peninsula, upper 50s, maybe in the North Slope, mid 60s possible in the Eastern North Slope, and 50s, mid to upper here in the Southwest. And then the lows for Monday morning, upper 30s here over the Eastern Interior, no change, near 50 for the Panhandle, upper 40s out in the West, and that'll be followed by highs. Uh, still possibly into the lower 70s over the eastern interior of the state, as well as the southeast coast, uh, Juneau on down to Metlakatla. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather graphic. Of course, a lot of IFR here, Bering Sea, Aleutians to, uh, oh, False Pass, maybe King Cove there, south side of the peninsula. Otherwise, marginal VFR across Bristol Bay. And starting the day out with some uh, IFR here over the southwest interior and Manuska sit in the valley into the Kenai Peninsula. VFR eastern interior and looks like a little bit of VFR eastern Beaufort Sea coast and the eastern north slope. Brooks Range pretty marginal and some IFR here along the, uh, well close to Dixon entrance there in the southern panhandle. And for the afternoon just some Body, isolated areas of marginal VFR possible over the inside waters. Oh, there's going to be another nice day tomorrow under high pressure. Uh, IFR, though, looking lurking right off the coast. And also some IFR could, could persist into the afternoon. This should be gone, actually, by late in the afternoon here uh, as things kind of improve throughout the uh, day. But uh, no change out here in the west with IFR over the Bering Sea. Maybe a little improvement over the Aleutians, but that IFR zone through the Bering Strait, northwest coast, Kivalina Point, Hope Cape, Lisburn Point, Lay, uh, at, maybe at the Sook, probably marginal VFR there with uh, IFR to about the Point Barrow area. And then for uh, Monday morning, marginal VFR at best out here over the Bering Sea. Uh, Probably could have thrown a little more IFR in there, but anyway, uh, marginal VFR into the uh, Yukon Delta and to a lesser extent over the Cusquam Delta, IFR Southwest Mountains, southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range uh, looks to be IFR. Not too bad. North Slope Arctic Coast, Central Interior down in the Cusquam Valley, <clears throat> and the lower Yukon uh, River Valley areas, some uh, VFR Cook Inlet, Southern Kenai Peninsula, otherwise back to the marginal stuff here. Manuska, the Sitton Valley, Prince William Sound, but VFR, our Central Eastern Copper River Basin, and down across the southeast coast. And for Monday afternoon, VFR again here uh, with uh, lower conditions holding off the coast there, the panhandle into the Gulf of Alaska, but south of the North Gulf Coast. Although a little bit of marginal stuff could catch uh, Cape St. Elias, Cape Yakutaga, those areas. Otherwise, pretty good here. Eastern half of the state or better. Uh, VFR, western side coming down to marginal with the IFR in the afternoon holding right along the coastline all the way up to the western Arctic coast and really not much change in the Bering Sea. Anatuvik tomorrow, both Anatuvik and Adigan, basically VFR. Could be some marginal VFR, maybe on the southern entrances of both passes. Uh, that's where the lowest clouds would be. Otherwise, uh, Lake Clark and Merrill look for gradual improvement throughout the day. Marginal VFR with possible IFR to even start there here. And that'd be on the eastern approaches, but afternoon looks pretty VFR-ish. Same trend for rainy IFR to VFR. And for windy, marginal VFR becoming VFR probably in the late morning. Uh, could be some persisting marginal VFR here near the southern entrance, maybe a little farther to the south. And for Isabel, though, VFR, Mintesta, VFR, Tanita, starting out marginal, becoming VFR gradually. And Portage, IFR to start, uh, might be a slow trend up to the marginal VFR category, but I think it'll happen. Chilkoot and White, good VFR. Freezing level here, 6,000 feet, basically here along the western and western interior. 10,000 feet with that upper level ridge shifting eastward into the northwest territories. And for icing, uh, quite a zone here, that moisture sliding northward. This zone dissipating throughout the day, so the best chance here early morning, south central Alaska up to the Alaska Range, but this thing kind of shifting eastward a little bit, but basically dissolving in place. 
Jet stream, south to north flow, that's why that thing's not going to really push to the east too long, uh, quickly with a high holding here over the northwest territories. Trough out over the Bering Sea, 120 knot jet splits here south of Kodiak, one branch 70 to 80 knots right into the west central interior. 9,000 feet, good southwest or westerly flow, eastern Aleutians 30 knots, and then southwest 25 to 35, western into the central interior areas, but pretty light. South central Alaska 10 to 15, 5 to 15 or 5 to 10 for the Panhandle. Pretty light wind, central western Aleutians. And 3,000 feet, uh, 25 knots here, 25 to 35, actually uh, turned southerly 20 to 25 into the uh, western interior. 30 knots, so up over the northwest areas. Life for the Panhandle, southeast interior. Turbulence shaping up uh, for small aircraft. Uh, considerable moderate chop here from the Brooks Range southward into the southwest mountains, as well as the eastern Aleutians, and early on for Atka Island. Otherwise, like to isolate a moderate chop here for Bristol Bay and the Alaska. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, joined once again by the science liaison of Gina, Eric Stevens. Gina, of course, is the Geographic Information Network of Alaska based up at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And Gina is all about satellites, and Eric mm -hmm. is always here to tell some really cool stuff about satellites. Now, the last time you were here, we talked mm -hmm. about how the weather satellites can see clouds and what's under the clouds, but you're telling me that satellites can do a lot more, even protect the, uh, the general public uh, with uh, aviation safety information. That's right. There's one particular aspect of satellites we're going to mm -hmm. talk about today that might not be immediately obvious, and that is detecting things in the atmosphere mm -hmm. that are not clouds, that are not snow, not rain, huh. but rather a hazard that can happen here in Alaska, and that is volcanic ash. Ah, of course. When okay. a volcano goes off, puts ash in the air, this is of course, a hazard to the public if the ash were to fall on the ground in, in accumulating amounts. Sure. Additionally, while the ash is in the air, and this is the more frequent hazard, is it's a hazard to aviation mm -hmm. because you cannot fly an airplane into volcanic ash without, without great risk. Worst case scenario, the ash gets into a jet engine, right. wrecks the engine, kills the engine, mm -hmm. and now you have an airplane flying with no engines. Right. It won't fly for long. So aviators need to avoid that ash. How do you avoid the ash? You have to know where it is mm -hmm. by identifying it with a satellite image and perhaps predicting then where the ash will flow with the overall weather patterns. Satellites are so important for identifying when a volcano goes off mm -hmm. and then tracking the ash after the, the volcano injects the ash into the atmosphere. Now, are you talking about seeing the heat signature or a huge volcanic plume with a cloud that we're used to seeing in the really pretty pictures of, of any Alaska volcano that's erupted recently, Redoubt, for example? Or are mm -hmm. we talking about the really fine details? Because this well, is polar orbiting satellites, the ones that are very low to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. The, the geostationary satellites can do some detection. The polar orbiters, like you say, they're mm -hmm. closer to the Earth. They mm -hmm. give the even better view. In answer to your question, mm -hmm. I would say all of the above. Oh, okay. A heat oh. signature from a volcano going off with all the, the heat that comes um, with the eruption, that mm -hmm. can be identified in infrared imagery. Okay. We've got images from the Kamchatka Peninsula. That's, that's the far eastern part of Russia mm -hmm. on the western side of the Bering Sea, loaded with volcanoes. Right. You know, Alaska has plenty of volcanoes of its own. We can also be affected when a, a volcano goes off in Kamchatka, say, mm -hmm. and then the weather carries that ash toward Alaska from the west. Right. You can see the, the infrared heat signature, like you say. Okay. Also, um, the ash in the air can be detected by doing some sophisticated uh, channel differencing within the satellite data. You can find the, uh, the identification of sulfur dioxide, say, that's a component of the volcanic okay. emission, mm -hmm. and you can trace this um, with the satellite imagery. Um, sometimes volcanoes go off that haven't gone off before, mm -hmm. and we're not expecting them to go off. Say if there's no seismometers around a given volcano that hasn't gone off in 100 years, you might not be expecting it to go off. And the satellite imagery, since satellites can be uh -huh. globally comprehensive, that might be the first sign that you have that a volcano oh, wow. in an unexpected area is going off. So it's a good backup system, okay. Right, wow. right, and, and people are working all the time on automating the, uh, the interrogation of satellite data by computers mm -hmm. to provide a, a first alert to a human, to, so the software will say, we think this might be important human, go take a closer look, because right. the people are still the best way to, to interrogate the imagery, but the planet's a big place, and yes. we can't be looking everywhere all the time, so the software helps give a first, first cut. And then in Alaska, there's a special kind of surprise angle where the satellites are helpful, and that is um, the Katmai eruption mm -hmm. of 1912. 
um, huge eruption. There is still somewhat of a moonscape out there in southwest right. Alaska where all this ash is laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a, a strong weather pattern comes along where we have roaring northwest winds that go across the Alaska Peninsula there and can actually pick some of this ash up right. off the ground. No volcano is going off. This was more than 100 years ago that that volcano actually yeah. blew. So you're not gonna see a heat signature like we were discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be no seismic signature of a volcano going off. So those data sets, they'll say, oh, no right. problem. Mm -hmm. But you can see in some of the satellite imagery this ash, as it's called, resuspended. Right. When the, the wind comes along, picks it up, the ash can be lofted a few thousand feet in the air just okay. with the wind. And an airplane flying into that plume is, is exposed to some danger. So we need to track right. that ash to provide guidance to aviators that you don't want to be flying here at these elevations in this area. We've got some imagery of the resuspension. And you can mm -hmm. see the wind blowing strongly from the northwest, picking up the ash and, and blowing it down to the southeast. Right. And so that's another perhaps not immediately obvious hazard of volcanic ash. It, Katmai is the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> for sure. Very good. So we've got satellites that, that can help us understand the weather uh, from the past and the immediate past. And we talked last time about how that's feeding into the forecast modeling to help improve mm -hmm. predictions. But mm -hmm. now they're also protecting the general public with aviation sensitive information and watching volcanoes, whether they're erupting or maybe have erupted in the past and finding the, the left behinds from, from those uh, volcanic events there. So really impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again today. And uh, you're a gift that keeps on giving from the satellite community. So <laughs> thanks a lot. And we hope to have you back again soon. Again, Eric Stevens with Gina at the University of Alaska of Fairbanks. And if you'd like to check out any of the information that uh, Eric has shared with us again today, you can do that very easily by going to www.gina.alaska.edu. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, coastal water forecasts here on the south coast of the Panhandle, north to northwest, 15 knots, north coast, northwest 15. Uh, not too bad wind-wise here. Uh, five to six foot seas, even lighter winds over the inside waters, north to northwest at 10 knots for Clarence Strait, Stevens Passage, north 15 for Lynn Canal. And the outlook for Monday, north winds 10 knots here. All of the inside waters, uh, be some variation, variable to north at 10, seas pretty slight, two feet or so. Northwest, 20 knots for most of the coastline, a little lighter up north there at 15, but seas running six to seven feet. Prince William Sound, uh, variable to northeast at 15 tomorrow, seas three feet west, 15 for the north Gulf Coast. And uh, Barren Islands, light winds, same thing, same thing or same forecast for Kamishak Bay, uh, southwest at 10 with seas uh, three feet in the bay to six feet for the Barren Islands. Cook Inlet, light northeast drift at 10 knots with two foot seas. And the outlook for Monday, uh, north of the Forelands, east at 10, two foot seas, 15 knots there for Southern Cook Inlet with uh, three foot seas. And Kamishak Bay, southeast at 20 now, uh, seas running five feet, south 15 for the Barren Islands, and west southwest at 15 for the North Gulf Coast, while Prince William Sound will swing the direction around stays light but looking at southwest at 10 knots and seas at about two feet for kodiak island southwest winds 20 knots five to seven foot seas bristol bay south at 20 south 20 also from sitkanak to castle cape and the alaska peninsula small craft advisory south 25 knots c7 to as high as 10 feet on the pacific side of the peninsula and then for monday here southwest at 20 knots and still 10 foot seas on the Pacific side. Southwest 20 right on up uh, to Sitkanak and across Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait with seas running five to eight feet southwest of 15 for Bristol Bay. And for the Fox Islands, 20 to 30 knot winds from the south southwest tomorrow with seas running uh, seven to 13 feet, highest on course on the Pacific side of the islands. And for Adak and Atka, west winds 15 to 25 with small craft advisories uh, on the Pacific side. And then light uh, kind of variable west to southwest to northwest winds for the western Aleutians, only at 10 to 15 knots. And then those will pick up to 25 here as the far western Aleutians, specifically Shimi and Atu, start to come under the influence of that big storm out over Kamchatka Peninsula. 
bring it up to 25 out of the southwest. Otherwise, westerly winds pretty light here for the central Aleutians, uh, about 10 knots or so, and uh, 10 to 20 knots for the eastern Aleutians uh, from the west southwest, and seas 5 to 10 feet. Southwest coast, small craft advisories tomorrow. Small crafts also for St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound, where the winds will be up to 30 knots. Otherwise, Sudley's 25 along the coast to St. Lawrence Island, south 20 for the Pribilofs and St. Matthew Island. And uh, much lighter, more variable conditions in store for Monday here. Southwest 10 to 15 along the coast, north 10 for the Pribilofs, northwest 15 for St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island east to 10, but southeast 20 for Norton Sound. For the Beaufort Sea, or the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, especially the far eastern zone here, light east winds tomorrow, south 15 on the uh, east central coast. Central coast, east 15, drop down to 10 knots on the west side, back up to 15 here on Cape Lisburn to Point Hope, southeast 20 uh, from Wales on up to uh, Cape Thompson. And then those will be lighter, 10 knot winds here from Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort uh, from the south southeast. Southwest 15 for the uh, central coast and then down to 10 knots over toward demarcation point. For tonight again, this uh, front really starts to uh, crumble here, especially in this zone northwest of uh, Denali Park. Uh, look for some light rain along the southern slopes of the uh, Western Brooks Range and unsettled and damp down across Seward Peninsula and Norton Sound into the Yukon Delta, but drying out here, kind of a break coming in behind this thing. Stays fair over the eastern interior and the Panhandle. More rain with this system, and again, small craft advisory winds with that coming into the Alaska Peninsula from the west there. And that whole mess shifts up and makes for kind of a cloudy, damp day over the western half or at least third of the state as some of that moisture tries to push into uh, south central Alaska. It should be a little bit of a break here as this original uh, moisture band slowly fades away for Sunday. And then Monday, this weekends, but keeps a chance of rain over the uh, Seward Peninsula all the way down into Bristol Bay. Mostly sunny, panhandle in the eastern interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.